Hello and welcome to part 19 of my Let's Play series of videos for Dwarf Fortress. I'm Sippy Cup. Um, this episode is going to be a little bit different. There's not really going to be a tutorial aspect. I thought I would just show you what's going on in my fortress right now because I'm starting to have some of that capital F fun which means that uh, I'm on the verge of having some bad things happen. So let's real quick, let me let me give you kind of an MTV Cribs kind of tour of uh, what I've been doing in the fortress and uh, show you all the ways that things are hitting the fan right now. So let's look outside and I'll show you what's going on out here. Okay, I had to expand the refuse pile because there's all kinds of body parts from all kinds of things. Um, ant people, we'll, we'll go into that more later, monkey corpses. I started building an outdoor barracks because I wanted to um, have the front entrance to my fort guarded uh, and <clears throat> have there be lef less distance to travel than the one that's inside. I know it's not a huge you know, time saver, but this way I figured if they're off duty they can be in here training doing their squad and individual training and then if I activate them, you know, for instance, tell them to go guard the entrance, you know, they're right here. So, let's see, not much else going on outside. Oh, I built a kennel. A kennel is uh, a workshop that you can build. Actually, it's not under the workshop menu, but if you press B and you build a kennel, you can take all those dogs that you've been collecting and train them into war dogs and hunting dogs. You can actually also train other kinds of war animals, and if you can somehow capture, um, you know, like a grizzly bear, or you know, for instance, or um, some other kinds of animals, you can, if you can cage them, you can get somebody with animal training labor to train them and make them fight for you, and that's pretty sweet. Some of them can be pretty vicious. Uh, what else? Okay, so there's still the traps there. I still got my dogs chained up here. I built a drawbridge. Uh, there's not actually. Uh, a moat here, and the reason is that I couldn't channel below because I have my fortress immediately below. So, if I were to if I were to channel this out, there would just be a pit that led directly into my fortress. So that wouldn't be very helpful. However, if I want to lock down the fortress, what I can do is have somebody pull this lever here, which I've linked to the bridge, um, and it will raise this thing and uh, it will basically become like a constructed wall. So there's my trade depot, not really, nothing, there's not really anything new there. Uh, as you can see, I don't know if you remember from earlier videos, but this, I, I've actually dug this out a lot and made room for more stuff. So this looks really cluttered right now, so let me kind of show you what all's going on. So the barracks is still where it used to be. Um, this was this is my old mason shop and a mechanic shop. So what's going on with this guy? So there's this thing in the game called moods. Um, moods basically is where your dwarf gets an idea in their head that they've got the idea for the perfect item. And there's a couple different kinds of moods, but uh, there's there's some so there's some moods where if they can get all the materials they need to make this item they can actually become legendary in whatever, uh, you know, whatever skill it is. So what they'll do is they'll become, they'll get this mood, they'll go take over a workshop, and whatever it is that that workshop produces, they'll become legendary in that. So if this guy had been successful in making whatever the item was that he had wanted to make, um, he would have become, I think, a legendary mason. Well, the problem is that this particular mood he got, I'm pretty sure required him to have body parts from dead dwarves. Needless to say, I don't... I, d I didn't really want to kill my own dwarves if I can get away with it. So, problem is that if somebody is in a mood and they can't get the stuff that they want to build this item, they go crazy. And it can be a couple of different things. They could go berserk and start chopping people up. They could go insane, take off all their clothes, start deconstructing buildings. There's a few other ones too, I don't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, I, I knew that was going to happen because I knew that this guy couldn't get access to this stuff. So I basically just built a wall around him. Right now, he's insane. And let's take a look and see. He's hungry and thirsty because he can't get food, of course, because he's walled in. Eventually, he's going to succumb to hunger or thirst 
or both and die. And when that happens, I'll just bury him. It's uh, it's sad. I like this guy. He was a good miner, but well, what are you gonna do? That's part of the fun, right? So anyway, since this workshop is out of commission, I built a new Mason's workshop. That's a new feature, I guess. Um, farms still going strong. Oh, the same. Actually, the same thing that happened to this guy happened to another guy down here, and this is this is where I walled him in, but I deconstructed the wall and buried him. I built some coffins over here, and he's buried in one of these. Let's take a look. If you go to, if you use a Q key, you can select. You can, yeah, come over here. So here he is. You can see right here. This is the resting place of Rakist Zonmistem, the Miller. So let's let's keep looking around. Things got things got out of hand for sure. Um, huge furniture stockpile here. I've got a lot more room for things. You can see uh, there's all kinds of like mushrooms and stuff growing inside here. I don't know what the trigger for that is. Um, what you know what causes that? But these can actually be gathered with your plant gathering skill. So if I were so inclined, I could come in here and designate all this stuff. And actually, these kinds of the big mushrooms, I believe, count as trees. Let's see what it is. Tower cap, yeah, that's definitely classified as a tree, so you can make stuff out of that. Um, let's see what else. I got metal, the metal industry down here, so I guess this would be an introduction to um, the metal industry while I'm in the middle of telling you about what's going on in my fort. So, metal industry requires a few different buildings. I think at a minimum, if you want to make anything useful, you need at least three buildings, unless you have uh, access to magma. So the first thing you need is a wood furnace, and that's built like this, B, and then you come down to the furnaces submenu, which is E, and then you have access to a few different ones. Wood furnace lets you uh, burn wood and turn it into either ash or charcoal. Ash is used in soap and some other things, I think, and charcoal is used in the metal producing uh, industry. Um, then there's a smelter which is another kind of furnace which lets you melt down ores and then there's a glass furnace and then there's a kiln. I believe kilns make plaster which you use to set bones and things like that. Okay, so that that is how you produce charcoal which is a fuel and then you take that fuel and you use it at a smelter which is another kind of furnace. So here you can see I have different things that I can do. I can melt metal objects if I wanted to you know, reduce them to uh, bars, so if I get like a metal spear or something off an enemy, I can melt it down into a bar and make something else out of it. Um, same if I had like metal statues or something. Pretty much anything made out of metal, you can melt it down into whatever it's made out of and then reforge it. Um, hematite ore is basically iron ore. This is good in you know on its own to make iron things out of, but you could also uh, combine it with what's called pig iron to form steel. I'm not going to go into that in a ton of detail right now. Uh, then you've got other things here, gold, silver, copper. Gold and silver are not good for making armor and weapons out of, especially gold. It's really heavy, but as you know, it's soft. Um, copper is decent. It's not great. Um, and th these other things, I think some of these, uh, one of them turns into lead with the chance of silver, and the other is something like copper with the chance of silver. And there's electrum bars, which is just a nice, a nice metal. Um, or good for making fancy things out of. Anyway, then you've got your metalsmith's forge. This is where I actually make the items after you've made bars of stuff. So, you know, you can come here and I've made a bunch of steel battle axes and steel armor and stuff here by, you know, going to, say, armor, and then you choose a material that you want to use, and then you can forge all kinds of stuff. So those are the three buildings that are um, necessary for producing weapons and armor and stuff. Um, if you have access to magma, there's actually a special kind of building you can make, um, and those are magma forges and magma smelters. And you basically just to have uh, need to have magma one Z unit below your forge, and um, where your forge is placed, there needs to be on the Z level above there needs to be a channeled out tile. The magma below it needs to be a depth I think a minimum of four out of seven, and you want to be careful when you're making magma forges to you not to leave um, the part of your workshop that's touching the hole leading down to the magma right in the middle because then your guy will stand in it and potentially burn to death and that's not good. Anyway, okay, so let's see what, what else do I got going here. I, I built a hospital to treat the wounded 
Um, I got a little overzealous with my military. I was really having fun with the military system and I was sending my guys out on raids to kill <laughs> groundhogs at first and then that just wasn't satisfying so I decided to go down pretty deep into the earth and see what kind of crazy stuff I could find so let's see just exactly how deep oh and on our way down I have been expanding this living and dining room area a bit more as you can see from all the stone left over now because I now have a population of something like 70 dwarves so let's keep going this is really deep you can see um, how deep I'm going by keeping an eye on this this is the depth NZ levels um, let me go back up so you can see where I started hang on so my main uh, like workshop area is at Z level 133 so I'm gonna keep going down down here's where I encounter the first cavern layer and I built a, a wall here so that if there's for some reason some crazy subterranean flying things they wouldn't be able to get in my fortress before I was ready for them we keep going keep going keep going uh, this is still part of the first cavern layer bam I just bumped into the second second cavern layer and you see I had to actually move my main vertical shaft over here because if I had kept going down I would have tunneled into open space and that's no good so there's kind of this if you can tell this is sort of this pillar here in the next cavern layer that I use to make my down shaft in so this keeps going deeper and deeper and then not too far from where I found the second cavern layer I found the third cavern layer and there's some crazy things down here there's uh, these like ant people and uh, so I sent my squad my inky admirers or whatever those guys were down here to start fighting some of these ants and the ants I don't know I think they're just really super tough they have like uh, shells of chitin my guys were fighting this uh, ant queen down here forever I, I wish I had been recording it when it was happening but yeah there's there's a lot of carnage down here one thing to be aware of when you breach a cavern layer is that your guys um, that have hauling enabled will come down here and start trying to get anything that's not forbidden so you know if they see some uh, cave spider silk or something they want to come down here and try to get it but they're dumb they'll path right through enemies and that's exactly what happened this guy got completely brutalized and and um, let's see what happened to him yeah he ended up getting like he ended up getting stabbed in the stomach and then just repeatedly vomited himself to death and let's see, yeah, there's some there were some deaths of other people around here. I don't remember exactly where I killed the queen spear ant person, but her body got hauled off already. Anyway, so um, you know the bad news is that most of the guys I sent down here on this mission <laughs> to uh, increase their combat skills are now in the hospital with varying degrees of injuries you know so I can come over here and look at some of these guys with the V key and see what their wounds are this guy's got damage to his right upper arm right hand this guy is this guy's got some bad things going on here I think you can also you can come to their thoughts and preferences and it should tell you <laughs> what what else is going on with him here so his left lower leg is dented and his right lower leg is dented I'm not sure how his legs got dented but that sounds like it hurts Let's see, what about this guy? He also has dented feet and legs. That's pretty weird, okay. And what about these guys? Oh my god, this guy's totally wrecked. Look at all this damage here. <laughs> Let's take a look. Her head is cut open, her head is dented. Yeah, I'm not going to read all of this, but if you want to pause it and look at it, go ahead. She's, she's in bad shape. Um, and I don't think I have any thread or anything to stitch her up either, so... Yeah. Um. Oh, another thing. I guess the last thing I'll say before I end this episode and try to patch everything back together is that um, if you have war dogs, you can actually assign them to people. The way that you do that is by uh, using V, pressing P for preferences, going E, work dogs, and if you have any free work animals, either hunting or war dogs, you can assign them here, and they'll follow them around and fight with them. It's pretty cool. Anyway, that's it. Talk to you later.